Okay, so here we are continuing the tour at Wolfersdon. We've fast forwarded now from 1963. We're now in 1979, 1980, 1981, looking at the, the, the next generation of senders that was installed here. There are four units made by Marconi, type B6124. The previous 250s are BD272s. These are B6124s. Four of them for the Voice of America, paid for by, by Ronald, he's a nice bloke. And um, totally different configuration to the previous system, as you'll see. It's like almost one continuous unit. We've opened a few doors for you. Got the RF section on the right-hand side with a rogue Orban Optimod unit in there. And on the left-hand side is the actual RF section itself. Well, have a look at the, just a quick look at the front panel here just to get a, an idea of what's involved. Frequency synthesizer again. These units have got 32 RF channels available. If you look here, you can see we've got the 32 channels. We program those as humans to the frequency we want. Come down here, tune the sender up on the power, on power, tune it up, and then store the settings that we get. So they're manually set, and then it's able to remember the settings that we've put on as humans and drag them out whenever it wants to for the frequencies it does during the day and night. So these don't tune it from scratch. They have to be tuned manually and then stored. This is the unit that uh, contains the 25 channels and the tuning controls on the switches up and down with the readout display. As you see, this one's on 15, 6, 20 kilohertz. And all the settings there are all stored. The servo control for the capacitors and one inductor. It's a roller inductor servo control. So the sender's clever enough to know if it's 15 megahertz, it puts certain shorts on the coils inside, and this unit decides where the shorts go. Analog metering is provided. High level class B mod, or AB, it's actually it's in AB1, so grid current doesn't flow on the modulator tubes. They're around the corner, and we'll have a look at those in a minute. So you've got the modulators here, and you've got the RF section metering sort of around the edge. Grid current, screen grid current, cathode current, penultimate stage as well has got grid current, screen grid current, cathode current. We'll have a look at um, one of these working on, an, on a later shot. Again the same sort of idea of indication of progress of transmission. Start with is the mains present, fairly basic, then you go through the cooling and the filaments and the standby, AUX HT, main HT, screen HT, transmitter on. But to get the yellows at the top here, you need to get the greens below. So have you got water? Have we got modulator water flow? Have we got RF water flow? High pressure air, low pressure air, black heat, filaments are energized, RF flowing through the components. All these supplies need to be on to progress to get the transmitter on the air. The overloads for the transmitter are here. And as I say, the all band mod, the OptiMod unit is in the front here. The modulator driver is here, solid state, with a bit of analog metering. The two modulator valves just took round the corner, let's have a look at those. Here they are, Thompson tubes, hyper vapotron cooled. So cooling water in, hits the anode structure inside, it's ribbed all the way around, vertical ribs steam and water or steam is made by the dissipation uh, a bubble of steam uh, appears and then the water goes in to kill the steam take the heat away on the on the pipes there a different system to the uh, vapor system as on the uh, older transmitters filament uh, transformers below and current metering etc in the middle there so ab1 no grid current a pair of tetrode amplifiers Again, about 180 kilowatts, 200 kilowatts output. Very similar to the previous uh, transmitter. All right, this is the, um, the final RF stage above and the penultimate RF stage below on the 300 kilowatt B6124. The actual pen tube is located here in this little uh, section for its own little section. It's fed with drive from 150 watt solid state amplifier. Uh, grounded cathode and the anode circuit here is comprised of 22 mil copper pipe with shorts on. These shorts can be pneumatically operated backwards and forwards. 
So obviously more coil in circuit, lower frequencies, less coil in circuit, higher frequencies. That's the switching for the pen. The pen drive then comes through and hits the grid of this final output stage. This is a 300 kilowatt output stage, again with a Talis tube tetrode. The 300 kilowatts is generated here. The drive for this comes from the pen, as I said, into the grid. And the anode circuit again is here. The tuning of the anode circuit is in two parts. We need to stop the RF going up the main HT power supply. So to do this we have a parallel tuned circuit. Here's a Jennings capacitor and the Marconi inductor at the back. Here's a parallel tuned circuit. This is tuned to resonance on the carrier frequency. So the DC flows through the coil but the RF has to flow down through the blocking capacitor here down to the Pi network which is the output. So there's the Pi blocking C, 1000 picofarads at uh, 44 kV, that one. We'll go around and look at that stage in a minute. Okay, so here again is the pen, here's the final stage here. Water-cooled capacitor, ceramic, sorry, vacuum, vacuum capacitor, ceramic body. That, that, that carries the full 300 kilowatts plus modulation to hit the output stage Pi network, which starts here. And the first thing it finds is a motorized capacitor to earth. We blow the edges, we blow the edges of these foils because the RF always wants to go down the edge, not among the whole foil, so it tends to, to fry the edges. So we blow those with air to keep them as cool as we can. There's, at the back there is one of the shorts that's open and that, will, that short would close on 26 and 21 megahertz, but it's open on this frequency, which is 15 megahertz. So the RF runs down through these 54 mil copper pipes Eventually, after going through a, few, a couple of pie sections, it ends up at the back here, on this final run out from the bottom. Up it comes through the last two capacitors to earth, feeder load one and feeder load two, and it hits the second harmonic tuned circuit. There's the capacitor. The coil for it is on the right hand side. So we um, again resonate this and that tuned circuit for the second harmonic. The RF lead leads as a, an unbalanced output at 75 ohms through this aperture here, through a, a, a filter in the, in the chassis work above us, a low pass filter to cut off all frequencies above 30 megahertz, and then up at 75 ohms into the, into the enclosure at the top. This is a tuned palsy stub ballon, 75 ohm input, it's a 4 to 1 transformer, so the output impedance is 300 ohms balanced, which is on the right hand side. So we get back to our balanced system to suit the arrays here at Wolferton. So that's a tuned palsy stub, 75 ohms input to 300 ohms output.